God's Word. We'll go back again to the book of Nehemiah, chapter 3. And I'm actually just going to read again the first 10 verses. And the Lord uh, gave me a different approach to Nehemiah, chapter 3, as I was getting ready for it. And uh, I'm really excited about it. So hopefully you will be as well. So you're in Nehemiah, you're probably already there, I'm still getting there, but you know, you probably just heard me say that I'm really excited about it. I get called out at work all the time, so I get to do a training, and I'm doing all kinds of things, and I'm like, and I'm really excited about this next training, and one of the guys just finally said, are you ever not excited about something? <laughs> not too often. So I'm pretty excited about the way this is going to go, and trust that it'll be a blessing to you. So I'm going to read the first 10 verses again. Nehemiah chapter 3, then Eliza, the high priest, rose up with his brethren, the priest. And they built the sheep gate. They sanctified it and set it up and set up the doors of it, even into the tower of Mia. They sanctified it into the tower of Haniel. And next to him built the men of Jericho, and next to them built Zikar, the son of Emar. But the fish gate did the sons of Hanasseh build, who also laid beams thereof, and set up the doors thereof, the locks thereof, and the bars thereof. And next unto them repaired Merith, the son of Uriah, the son of Koz, and next unto them repaired Meshalim, the son of Berechiah, the son of uh, Meshilabel, and next unto them repaired Zadok, the son of Bana, or ba I'm sorry, Bana. And next unto them, the Terkarites repaired, but their nobles put not their necks to the work of the Lord. Moreover, the old gate repaired Jehoiada, the son of Peshit, or uh, Hesiah, the Meshalim, the son of Besodiah. They laid up the beams thereof, and set up the doors thereof, and the locks thereof, and the bars thereof. And next unto them repaired Melathiah, the Gibeonite, and Jadon, the Maronite, the men of Gibeon, and Mizpah, unto the throne of the governor on this side, the river. Next unto him repaired Uzuel, the son of Heriah, of the goldsmiths. Next unto him also repaired Hananiah, the son of one of the Apocrites, and they fortified Jerusalem unto the broad wall. And next unto them repaired Rephi, the son of Hur, the ruler of the half part of Jerusalem. And next unto them repaired Jehadiah, the son of Herupah, even over against his house. And next unto him repaired Hatish, the son of Hashabaniah. Shall we look to our Lord in a word of prayer? Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank thee, our Lord, for thy love to us, mercy and grace and watch care over us. We thank thee, our Father, for allowing us the privilege of coming into the house of the Lord, for allowing us the privilege of fellowshipping, getting to enjoy the presence of one another, for being able to sing and worship and pray, hear your word. And I ask, Father, that you would again prepare our hearts, ears, and minds to be open and receptive to thy word. And may everything we do bring honor and glory to our King of kings and Lord of lords. I ask, Father, that you would be with me as thy servant. May you give me liberty and ability to present thy word in truth and in love. Forgive us of our sins and these things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. you may be seated. So I titled the message last week, Great Works and Their Beginnings, and I began to go through the different gates. And I talked about the lamb gate and the fish gate, and then I got kind of stuck on the, uh, the old gate, right, in verse 6 there. Moreover, the old gate repaired Jehodiah the son. So we talked a lot about that. And I thought, well, I, I, I was thinking, man, there's a lot of gates for me still to go through. And I'm not so sure that I can, you know, get a correlation or a relation to each of these gates. And so then I got to thinking and I got to rereading this chapter. And so not necessarily going to take in this sermon this chapter verse by verse. But we're going to look at a collection of verses together and hopefully be able to really understand what was going on during the rebuildings of the gates of Jerusalem, the walls, right? Getting the, uh, the city refortified and protected as we talked about since we started this uh, seven weeks ago. And then as we get back to chapter four, now chapter four gets us back into, um, you know, the people and some conflict. Right? So, you know, um, Sam Ballad is going to give them some conflict again, even after all the work that has already been done. So we're going to get back into seeing some of that conflict from Sam Ballad and the people and their mind. But what really struck me as I was reading through chapter 3 was the kind of people that went to work. 
and then the kind of work that they did. And so that's what I'm going to talk about um, for this second part of chapter 3 as I talk about great works and their beginnings. Because you see, I want you to understand the significance of this chapter. And even though, again, we're just going to kind of go through uh, lumps of verses or a few verses throughout, but I want you to know that God absolutely knows the work that each and every one of these people did. Amen? Does that make sense? God knows what they did. And there's a record of the work that they did. And you're thinking, wow, that might preach. Amen, that will preach. God knows what we do for Him. God knows the work we do for Him. And God knows what we don't do for Him as well. And, and all of those things are what we're going to develop today. Again, that uh, as I was looking over this, I kind of gathered from chapter 3. So God has a record of all of his children that serve him. Now, known unto God are all his works from the beginning. Amen. So it is not as if we do something and God's like, oh, that was a great work, Justin. Let me write that one down. That's not what I mean by that. Known unto God are all his works from the beginning. But God knows and has record because he's God of all that we do for him when we serve him. Um, so again, in this chapter, not only do we have a record of the gates that were rebuilt here in chapter 3, but we have here a record of the names and the families and of the professionals and all the individuals who were engaged in the building. Now, let's set it up. Let's make sure you're with me here. Let's go for a few seconds from the beginning. So here we have Nehemiah, the man of the hour, right? That's where we started. Nehemiah, sitting in the palace, or wherever he might have been, a cupbearer of the king. Pretty good job, right? Nehemiah now has a burden from the Lord to go back to a city that is a dunghill, a city that is in desolation, a city upon whose walls are broken down, a place of uncomfort. That's where Nehemiah was going to go back to. Sign me up for that mission, right? Not necessarily, usually. Necessary, usually. Okay. Now, in the course of time, we found out something about Nehemiah, right? We found out that Nehemiah was an incredible man of prayer. And he went and he set his face unto the Lord. And he prayed unto God. So much so that Nehemiah's what? His countenance changed. The king thought he was sick. Said, no, it's not that. Listen, I'm just going to tell you what's going on, king. Gives what's going on to the king. The king does not kill Nehemiah. The king says instead, Nehemiah, what do you need from me? Nehemiah says, I'm going to go pray. Amen. So Nehemiah went back to pray. And then he asked the petition of the king. Nehemiah gets to Jerusalem. Now Nehemiah could have got there, saw how bad it was, and said all that stuff, and said, Lord, I'm out. You know, I said that this morning. I keep using that phrase. Sorry about that. But he didn't do that. So now... We're starting to see some real leadership in Nehemiah, aren't we? I said that as this, as this goes on, uh, not only are we going to see lots of practical applications in the book of Nehemiah for our lives, but we're going to see some real characteristic uh, leadership traits of Nehemiah. So Nehemiah is now set a course, this great work of rebuilding these walls. Nehemiah has this burden from the Lord, but Nehemiah knows he can't do it alone. Nehemiah knows that this great work that God has given and I believe from what I know about Nehemiah as we've studied this far I believe Nehemiah would have died trying to do it himself <laughs> but Nehemiah shows us a great leadership he got people involved he got people to buy in if you will to this incredible work and they saw in Nehemiah a man worth following they saw in Nehemiah a burden worth sharing, a mission worth doing. All of that we can relate to today, right? Getting behind the man of God, going out and doing the work of the Lord, going out and preaching the gospel to every creature, people having a mind to work, as we'll see in chapter 4 next week. That's the, that's the incredible aspect and the incredible leadership, again, that we see of Nehemiah, the, the buy-in, right? And beloved, I want all of you, I want everybody to know that God knows what you're doing for Him, amen? God knows everything that you do for Him. 
And on the other side of that, of course, God knows everything that you're not doing. But maybe you're here today and maybe you're laboring away in secret. And what I mean by that is maybe it's in prayer. Maybe you're doing a work for the Lord that people don't ever know about themselves. Well, know this, beloved. God knows the work that you do. <laughs> God knows the work that you do. Turn with me, if you will, to Matthew chapter 6, verses 5 and 6. I preached, oh, what's it been, uh, three or four months ago now, about the need of her, right? The importance of every member. Her was there, handing up, holding up one of the arms of Moses. Not very known, but God knew the work that he did. In Matthew chapter 6, just to reiterate that, verses 5 and 6, And when thou prays, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, but they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy Father which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. Our God is an awesome God. <laughs> and so here are these people doing the work, and I'm going to talk about that in just a second. Some of the, and, and from what I read in chapter 3, they weren't doing it in a private way, or they weren't doing it in a boastful way. Hey, look at what I'm doing. But they did what they were to do. God knows about all the work you do for Him. Well, we traveled around the city walls for a little bit, we looked at some of the different gates. And we now I want us to look at again every man at his appointed task. The men and the women and the families, they were effectively where Nehemiah had asked them to go, which ultimately is where God wanted them to be. And they were laboring with all their might in that place. And what we notice, as we read even in the first ten verses, and you could go on, and again, there's you know, all of the different works, all the different gates, the different families, all the way down to verse 32. And what you will notice when you read that, or what was not mentioned anyway, because there may have been a straggler or two, but I did not see any complainers. I did not see any moaners. I did not see anybody that was, uh, you know, generally speaking, again, in a crowd, you're always going to have a couple of naysayers, right? Always going to have a couple. But in this reading, I didn't notice any of that. Right? Nobody's saying, I'm not doing that work. That's somebody else's. Whoever used that line. <laughs> yeah. Probably use that a time or two of mine. That's not my job. Right? Well, I don't like the work that I've been given to do, Nehemiah. Let me have something else. Man, I'll tell you what. If I have one more employee that tells me that during the day, I don't want to do that. I don't care what you want to do. <laughs> I smile and I think, go do the work. Anyway, right? I don't see any of that here, right? Nobody say, well, you know, they're building over there and the sun is shining beautifully. I'm over here in the cold. It's a little damp and it's shady. I don't really want to be here, Nehemiah. Put me over in the light. You know, I don't see any of that. They were appointed, again, showing this great leadership ability of Nehemiah and really the people that, again, bought in to do this incredible work for the Lord. No grumblers, no complainers, right? The other thing I noticed, a lot of these folks had other professions as I read through this, and I'll, I'll point out some of those. They had nine to five jobs, so to speak. Probably a lot longer than nine to five, right? Up, sun up to sun down. And say, I don't have time. I'm not going to do anything, right? I've got other things to do. The very characteristic, beloved, of this chapter is that the people, in a general sense, were united together to get the job done and get the walls built. I've experienced and had the joy of experiencing that a little bit here at this church, right? When we uh, purchased the building and we had, you know, a week really to leave Fredericktown and come over to here, get everything out of that building and into this building. And 
um, I got to see a bunch of people coming together to do some work. You know what I mean? And, and I wasn't here for, for all of it. Uh, there were 14, 15, 16, 17 hour days. And the days didn't get shorter as the Sunday was coming. They got longer. But the people that came in here had a mind to work. Everybody had lots of different things going on. Um, right? I, I, you know, the Lord allowed some to be here from sun up to sundown. And then some were still working but would come in after their, their day of work and come here to work. That's awesome when the people of God get together to work like that. <laughs> I can't imagine what Nehemiah must have felt. Here's this incredible burden that Nehemiah had, and now there's all these people that have been appointed to these gates and they're rebuilding the wall, and Nehemiah orchestrating and praying and praying for safety and praying for labor and praying for all these things to be done, and here's these people doing the work. And from what we read in chapter 3, not complaining, not moaning, not griping, not doing any of those things. They did the work. It was just amazing to see this. All of them coming together. And I encourage each and every one of God's children, or I want every one of God's children to know that God has a work for every one of us that he has tempted together in his church. God help us all to do his work. When we read verse 1 again, so we'll go back all the way to verse 1, I want to point out something here. That Elijah then, the high priest, that's what I want to point out. <coughs> he was not above doing the work. The high priest got involved. He rose up with his brethren, the priests. And they built the sheep gate. They sanctified it and set up the doors of it. Even the tower of Maya, they sanctified into it. The tower of Haniel. Uh, I, I, I don't mean to keep calling out Brother Terry, but let me just say this, right? So um, these fans, these were not part of the original building. <laughs> and uh, I am not an electrician. I am not a carpenter. I am not any of those things. I can, I can become a, and be a pretty good assistant. You need me to hold up the drywall, Alan, <coughs> on my head, on a ceiling? Yeah. Are you okay, Terry? You need, I got water up here. I don't know if you need any of that. Okay. Sure. But I want to tell you, and this is not, again, bragging on Justin, but I am not above doing service and work for the Lord. Does that make sense? And Terry, we have this big old ladder, and he gets up in that attic, and he says, here's what we're going to do. And uh, he said, you think you can do it? Think so? And so he got down out of that ladder <laughs> and came back down and got these fans up. We did four, we did the back four. That was our first go. And then it was like, what, next summer we're like, we need more fans. And back up in the attic, we went. I love this here in Nehemiah. There was nobody above doing the work. They were all rolling up their sleeves, getting involved in the building of the walls of Jerusalem. In verses 12 through 19, we haven't really read any of those yet, so um, we can skim through it. I'll start here in verse 12. And next unto him repaired Shalim, the son of Haloish, the ruler of the half part of Jerusalem, he and his daughters. So here's a ruler and his daughters. Women have an incredibly important work in the work of the Lord, and I'm going to talk about that in a second. No, well, yeah, I'm almost there. <laughs> um, right? And they went on and they went on. Over and over you see this in 12, you know, verses uh, 12 through 19 here. Statesmen, rulers, politicians, they were involved in the work. They didn't back out of the responsibility. They didn't say, this is below me. They were involved in this work. Verse 8, again, we see the priests and the rulers craftsmen that were involved in it. Next unto him repaired Uriazel, the son of Hananiah of the goldsmiths. Next unto him also repaired Hananiah, the son of one of the apocrites. I can't say that right. Apocrites. And they fortified Jerusalem unto the broad wall. So you got tradesmen, goldsmith. They're working together. They're doing what has been tasked them to do. Then back in verse 12, I didn't want to get back there. And next unto him repaired Shalim, the son of Hilaish, the ruler of the half part of Jerusalem, he and his daughters. You see, so ladies, 
I know sometimes it can feel like maybe you feel a little left out, you know, or maybe not as involved in the work, but they, ladies, were involved in the work, and the work of a, of a lady in a church is beyond my description of words. And I'll just take a few seconds to talk about that, kind of preaching out a little bit from Nehemiah there, but the work of God-fearing, God-honoring, God-loving ladies is amazing. Do you know, it, you know, again, oftentimes um, it is prayed for my wife and for my family. Do you know what they have to endure? <laughs> you know the prayers that go up for my wife and my family? Do you know the work that she does to keep me sane? <laughs> A lot. Right? The prayers of the ladies here, the food that is prepared. I'm not just saying that it's that, that woman's work to cook food. I'm not saying that. But how often that you provide all of that for us everything that goes involved, the heart of this church. Incredible work. Wonderful work. All right. The significant thing also here in chapter 3, with all these people, all these different people, different backgrounds, different skills, different abilities, different situations, they all operated in the work of the Lord and served the Lord. Isn't that awesome? Where do you think a preacher might go if he's talking about people working together and God having them do that? Probably right over there to 1 Corinthians. Is that sounding about right? Maybe over there in chapter 12? Sure. How about 1 Corinthians 12 and verse 12? For as the body is one and hath many members, and all the members of that body being many are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit we are all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and we made all to drink into one spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. And the foot shall say, because I am not the hand, I am not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear shall say, because I am not the eye, I am not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? But now... Have God set the members, every one of them, in the body as it hath pleased him. Verse 20. But now are they many members, yet but one body. Verse 25. That there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. And whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it, or whether one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. Now ye are the body of Christ, and members in particular. It is amazing when God's people get together. <clears throat> so we've seen the people in the work. We've seen the place of work. And now we're going to see where the work needs to begin. You say, well, Brother Justin, you've been preaching about it. The walls of Jerusalem. Well, I, I think there's something really important for us to point out here. Look at verse 10. And next unto them repaired Jediah the son of uh, Hiramah, even over again, even over against his house. And next unto him repaired Hatuish the son of Hashabaniah. I want you to go to verse twenty-three. And after him repaired Benjamin and Hashib over against their house. And he even repaired Azariah the son of Manasseh, the son of Aniah, by his house. And then I want you to notice verses 28 through 30. From above the horse gate repaired the priest, everyone over against his house. After them repaired Zadok, the son of Imar, over against his house. After him repaired also Shaim, the son of Shechraniah, the keeper of the east gate. After him repaired Hananiah, the son of Sheshulam, at Hanan, the sixth son of Zabalit, another piece. After him repaired Meshulam, the son of Berechiah, over against his chamber. After he repaired Micaiah the goldsmith's son into the place of Nerathams and of the merchants over against the gate of Milkad and to the going up uh, the corner, up of the corner. And between the going up of the corner and to the sheep gate he repaired the goldsmiths and the merchants. Over against the house we read a couple of times there. What a wonderful place for each of us to begin a work of the Lord in our homes. To begin to serve the Lord in our homes. 
In the series of messages that I preach on Family Matters, I talked about week after week that our first mission field is our home. That's where God has called us to first. To be a witness, to be a testimony to our own wives and children. So real work for God must begin at home. And let me tell you, the preaching that I do here would be nothing more than the sounding of a tingling brass if I didn't live it at home. If I'm not with the Lord in my home, then I dare not stand before you and preach to you about the Lord in his house. So, may we begin our work for the Lord at home. As we think about the Acts of the Apostles, the disciples, when they began to preach the gospel, they began where? Well, they began at Jerusalem. Then they went to Samaria. Then they went to the uttermost parts of the world. They started at home. So, may we pray for here first. For our community. For our loved ones. For this church. May we come together and have a mind, as we will see again next week, to work for the Lord. May we be praying that God would see fit to add to us and to continue to uh, bless us as he has in the time that we have been here. May we continue to grow stronger in the things of the Lord than we were a week ago, a month ago, a year ago, two years ago, and so on and so forth. And we come together to do a work for the Lord. May we come together to pray. May we come together as prayer warriors. So, that we can have a mind to work together as a body of Christ. To do as what God, what God would have us to do. I encourage you, because I did not, again, go all the way through gate after gate, family after family, but read through chapter 3. See the work that they did. See how they came together under this incredible, again, burden that started with Nehemiah. Nehemiah left the comfort of his homeland, traveled here, appointed them into work under the direction of God. How they got to work and how they began to repair the gates and ultimately the walls of Jerusalem. Next week, as I mentioned, we're going to see some conflict again. Sam Ballot's going to raise his head and going to speak out. We'll look at the reaction of Nehemiah. We're going to look at the reaction of the people. May God help us as we continue to do a work for Him. I thank you all for your attention to the Word of God once again. May God use His Word and add the blessing to it. Shall we stand together? We'll be dismissed in a word of prayer.